If we were going to demonstrate the highest quality of fish in America, who better to judge than Chef Michael Simarusti from Providence, LA? We're really interested in hearing your feedback on is not just the visual, your feedback on the smell right. and the taste and, and all of it. Uh, we're gonna start here with the uh, Boccaccio. Yeah, salmon grouper. I mean, it's beautiful. Obviously, like, fish looks, you know, pretty, pretty amazing. The jaw is fixed open, which is a sign that, you know, you guys performed Ikejime and that it was successful for sure, it looks. The color of the skin is perfect. You know, the flesh looks beautiful, very white. Like, you can tell the fish was properly bled. Personally, I mean, I've caught plenty of salmon grouper. I usually don't bring them home to eat. I usually give them to other guys on the boat, but I would definitely eat that. It looks absolutely amazing. And these Benito too, traditionally within 15, 20 minutes of being landed, lose all of their color, all of their iridescence. Um, these stripes will fade away. Um, you know, but a fish that's killed um, Ikejime style, obviously it helps preserve the color, preserves the, just all around, like the, the fish just looks absolutely perfect, you know? I really want to, I think this one's the sheep's head, I really want to see that because these are some of the most beautiful fish in the water um, here in California and that fish just looks absolutely perfect, you know? Like absolutely gorgeous. As if it was just pulled from the water like minutes ago and the, the color of the skin, the color of the flesh, Everything about it just looks beautiful. A couple more here. These are what? Vermilion rockfish. Oh, vermil I love vermilion. I think like rockfish are very, very versatile because the, fish is, the flesh is very white. Um, you know, if you get a good one, they're nice and fatty. Um, you can cook them, uh, you know, on the grill, you can cook them in a pan. Um, and then also if you want to braise them, like do, um, you know, some kind of fish soup or something like that, rockfish are excellent for that. Sheep's head, same thing, and Boccaccio, same thing. Fish like Benito, uh, especially here in Southern California, it seems like there's a lot of people that don't really value them as a food fish, but they're actually, you know, it's a delicious fish, you just have to know how to handle it. These fish fillet almost like a, well, just like a tuna, really. You can take four loins off them, and just like a tuna, the belly loin's gonna be fattier than the back loin. Yep. Um, the back loin is maybe a little bit easier to deal with, than the belly loin, but the belly loin, like I said, all the fat is there. Um, so, and really a delicious fish. Um, these fish are really great if you just sear them very quickly. Um, you can sear them either in a hot, very hot skillet or you can also sear them with water, which is one way that I like to do it. So when we get like beautiful bonita like this, what I like to do is I'll boil it just for like the fillets, the loins, with the you know skin removed, everything ready, ready, basically ready to eat, and we'll just boil them for literally 10 seconds in rapidly boiling water, and then take them, drop them in ice water, and then from there we'll put them in a marinade with um, dashi and white soy sauce, maybe a little bit of salt and crushed garlic, and just let the fish just kind of sit in there for a couple of hours. And after a couple of hours, you pull the fish out, slice it the way you would any other sashimi fish, and it's absolutely delicious. But even if you don't do that, poach the fish really quickly, follow the same process. Take your favorite soy sauce, water it down actually with ice, so super cold, a little bit of olive oil, some crushed garlic, and do exactly the same thing, and you get similar results. It's just maybe not as nuanced as if you use dashi. You could also, you know, spice rub it, like, with you know whatever your favorite spice blend is and then just sear it super quickly in a non-stick pan or a cast iron pan but still leaving the fish very very raw on the inside that's really for me the best way to eat bonito in the winter time we often have yellowtail on the menu here but it's not from the united states it's from japan yeah. so that begs the question what is the value of fresh fish is it really fresh if it's come all the way from Japan? And how do we reimagine the term fresh? This fish was caught 48 hours ago. I mean, if you took a fish of similar size and caught it 12 hours ago and handled it, you know, just let the fish suffocate on the deck, didn't ice it down immediately, didn't bleed it out, this fish would still be of much higher quality because of the way it was killed, because of the way it was handled. With these fish, like the way we, I always start out is by scaling them but not like the traditional way. We do it more the Japanese way with a knife. So this sabiki method of scaling the fish is actually not as easy as it looks. <laughs> this takes a lot of practice. So be careful if you're, gonna, if you're gonna give this a whirl at home. I'm gonna start by just taking off the head of the fish. And this, you know, a lot of people think that this part of the fish right here, the collar, is the best part of, uh, of a yellowtail. I'm not different, really. I mean, I absolutely love yellowtail collar. So that's something that you definitely want to preserve. And then, you know, it's great broiled or whatever. It's great on the grill.
So then later, after we do this, we can just remove the collar, split it right here, and you have two like perfect yellowtail collars that you could use for whatever you like. The, the firmness of the fish is just absolutely beautiful. And you, I mean, like even before I really look at it, you can just tell by the way the knife passes through it that the fish is perfect. So that's the, the back loin of the fish, which is a little bit leaner but and meatier. You know, that's the, that's the piece of the yellowtail that I would probably, you know, like grill or, you know, yellowtail is actually really great braised and that's a very traditional like Japanese way of preparing yellowtail. Here in the restaurant, we would remove the belly like this and save this for, you know, sashimi or tataki. For the, this portion of the belly, you still have to remove this, this membrane here, but you can do that pretty easily with a sharp knife. When you're dealing with a fish that's this size, the different parts of the fish, the loin, the belly, these are very, very different flavors and different characteristics. Um, so it's really great, it's a neat opportunity to explore the different characteristics in, in the fish's muscle tissue overall. So this is what we were talking about earlier, about just taking like a good quality soy sauce and diluting it and putting mm -hmm. in a little olive oil mm -hmm. and throwing some ice in there because the, the temperature of it just like makes the fish taste that much better because it's a little bit more crisp and it's a little bit more um, you know, refreshing. This is such an unfussy preparation method. Right? That's what I wanted to do it this way. Yeah. Just in a bowl, whatever, yeah. because this is what you can do on the back of your boat and enjoy fish that's like truly just world class. Yeah. There's no other way to put it. And this is why I didn't want to create something, you know, fancy and um, something that seems like out of reach. We have ice, we have soy sauce, we have garlic, and we have some citrus. That's all you need. <laughs> amazing. Yeah. Absolutely amazing. I mean, wow.